Hello and welcome to the February 26th edition of Titan TV News. I'm Gina Blasky. And I'm Steve Santucci. And here is this week's news. Well students, it is time for you to express your inner chef. Two teams of students will compete for the title of Best Chefs on Campus in the Battle of the Chefs. Winners will have their names on a trophy that will be displayed in the Memorial Center and have their meal served to the student body at some point in March. Three judges from the community will be selected and Dave Nicholson or Saga Dave as we know him, will MC the event which is sponsored by Sodexo. The battle is running from 515 to 615 in Saga, so don't miss out on the chance to see your fellow students duke it out in this culinary arena. The Women in Academia panel will be held in the Hanson Student Center at 7 p.m. on Thursday the 26th. Panel members include IU faculty and staff members, Chemistry Lab Supervisor Maria Magia on Science as a First Language, English as a Second Language, Life as an International Student, Assistant Professor of History Amanda Coles on the Imposter Syndrome, Associate Professor of Political Science Kathleen Montgomery on Women's Workload in Male-Dominated Academic Departments, and Counsel for IU Women member Laura Earhart, President and CEO of Michelle Mann Steel Construction Company on the Glass Ceiling for Women in STEM Fields. Sponsored by Feminism, Equality Matters, and the Council for IWU Women as part of the 2015 Summit. The Council for IWU Women Summit, featuring a variety of activities for current IWU women students to network with and learn from IWU alumni, will be taking place on Friday, February 27th and running from 11.45 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Friday, there will be 11.45 kickoff luncheon in the Young Main Lounge with the keynote speaker, Leah Merrifield, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Community Engagement and Founding Director of the Washington University College Prep Program, We Didn't Start the Fire, Reflections on Living a Life That Matters. At 1 p.m., practice interviews with council alumni will be held in the Hart Career Center, so students interested must sign up online through the Titan Career Link. Council interviewers include Claudia Brogan, Deborah Burt Frazier, Marilyn Graves, Marsha Gwensler Steves, Molly Rowlings, and Carol Smith. At 2 p.m. in the Hanson Student Center, Room 200, University Archivist and Special Collections Librarian and Associate Professor Meg Miner will be speaking on the historical importance of 19th century women. And finally, for Friday, starting at 3.30 p.m., the Career Connections event meet and greet networking event will be held with 30 plus council for IWU women members, all from a wide variety of career fields. More events for the summit will be taking place on Saturday, February 28th as well. And sponsored by the School of Music, the Illinois Wesleyan Civic Orchestra Concert Aria will be coming to the BCPA Bloomington Center for Performing Arts on Friday, February the 27th at 7.30 p.m. Admission is $10 for the general public with discounts for senior citizens and IWU alumni and $2 for students. Reserve tickets to the BCPA box office through the link below. The Human Rights Undergraduate Research Workshop will be held on Saturday, February the 28th, running from 8 a.m. to 4.15 p.m. The workshop is open to all majors and is completely free. From 8 to 8.10 a.m., Provost Jonathan Green will be giving the opening address and greeting. Afterwards, presentations by IWU's own students and faculty will follow. A full schedule of events can be found by following the link to the event details page. The Council for IWU Women's Summit continues on Saturday, February the 28th. Check-in and welcome receptions will be held at 9 a.m. in the Davidson Room. The icebreaker and introduction will be presented by Marsha Gunzler stevens Laura Jordan and partner Thompson Coburn, LLP, will be presenting Developing Mentor Relationships at 10 o'clock. At 10.45, students can choose to go to one of the two breakout sessions. One is a roundtable discussion with a meeting planner, Kelly Goodpaster, and certified insurance counselor from Diamond Brothers Insurance, Molly Rowlings. The other event is It's On Us, supporting survivors and creating a culture without sexual assault and violence on campus and beyond, hosted by Molly McClay, Assistant Director of the Women's Resource Center at the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, and also hosted by Darcy L. Greeter, IU Associate Dean of Students. And finally, at 12 p.m., the Closing Luncheon and Scholarship Award presentation will be in the Young Main Lounge with keynote speaker Jill York, Vice President and CFO of MB Financial. The non-org, The Paper Trail, Facts and Figures of Paper Consumption at IWU, will be presented by Associate Professor of Economics Diego Mendez Carbajo in the Davidson Room on Monday, March the 2nd from 6 to 7 p.m. The lecture, Racial Categories and Racial Politics, is part of the Perspectives on Civil Rights and Race lecture series sponsored by the Political Science Department. 
This lecture will be presented by Victoria Hatam, Professor of Political Science from the New School for Social Research. These lectures are made possible through generous grants provided by the Betty Ritchie Burr and Ivan Burr Endowment Fund, the Division of Student Affairs, and the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. The lecture will be held on March the 3rd in the Beckman Auditorium at 4 p.m. The Relay for Life kickoff on Wednesday, March the 4th, will be running from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Memorial Center. Students are encouraged to come out and help Colleges Against Cancer kick off their fundraising campaign. Half-off registration for Relay for Life and free Luminaria bag to the first 15 participants to register that day. And now over to Lisa, who interviewed Saga Dave about the Battle of the Chefs. I'm Lisa Kasakikazu, and I'm here today with David Nicholson, who most of you know as Sagade. So, Dave, could you tell us about this recent exciting event that we had here at Commons? Okay, well, let me just kind of set the stage for you. Uh, we have this set up for um, a, a host of any students who wanted to participate could be participants in it. Uh, we set it up online through uh, on Sodexo's website where a student could come in and uh, if they wanted to be a uh, competing chef that they had the opportunity to sign up for uh, our Battle of the Chefs, which took place on February the 26th from our Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera station in the Burkhoff Commons. And is this something that happens annually or is this completely new? How did they how did the idea even come about? Well, it, it, uh, actually, about four years ago, we did a battle of the chef. Well, actually, it was more like six years ago. We did a battle of the chef uh, right here from this station. Uh, but this year, uh, our corporate office had kind of came up with the same concept. Originally, it was my idea. Uh, corporate office came up with the same concept and put a lot of new moves or, or rules into the uh, into the program to make it a little more exciting. So uh, yeah. it, it, it's really coming from our corporate yes. office. And this is our first annual, this will be considered our first annual Battle of the Chefs. That's awesome that you came up with the idea. Uh, awesome. <laughs> um, so how does it work? Is it going to be like on Food Network, on Iron Chef America, where there's like two teams and it's really times and they're competing against each other. It's, it's going to be quite similar to that. How we've got it set up right now is we've got uh, two different teams. Each team has four students uh, that will be competing against each other. Uh, we have an, an ORL staff uh, of four that's competing and we have a uh, 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 we have a student senate a group of four students that's going to be, uh, and they'll, ORL will be kind of competing against uh, the student senate uh, representatives. Uh, we have um, we have one of our own in-house chefs that will kind of, they're not mediators, but they're there to simply keep it safe for the students so that uh, we know that things have been cooked to proper temperatures and uh, we have no hazards with the food. Uh, uh, my personal chefs will not be allowed to really give the students any information on how to cook something, but just to ensure that it stays and remains safe, uh, their whole cooking process, so they're not injured and the food comes out nice and uh, uh, safe also. Is the food served to people after? How we're going to do it is on that particular day, the food will only be served to the judges. Now, each student will, I mean, each group will have to prepare uh, three different items. They will have to prepare uh, four appetizers, they will have to prepare four entrees, and they will have to prepare four uh, desserts. And those four dishes that they're preparing for each of those dishes will be presented to the four judges that are uh, going to be judging them on um, I'll tell you what we're going to be judging them okay. on. Uh, we're going to judge them on the creativity of their dish. Uh, we're going to judge them on the organization, uh, their organizational skills. We're going to judge them on the appearance of their dish, uh, the taste of their dish, Important. and then we're right. 
and then we're going to judge them on, there is a 90 minute slot time that they have, so we're going to judge them if they were complete in 90 minutes, and then they will also uh, finally be judged on, um, we have what is going to be a mystery ingredient. There will be three mystery ingredients that are presented to our students uh, at the time of the event, and they have to use one of those ingredients in their appetizer, they have to use one of those ingredients in their uh, main entree, and then they have to use one of those ingredients in their desserts. We will also supply them with a host of other items that they can use for their uh, for preparing their, their three their three items. Okay, well, so it has to obviously be something that would work in all three. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and what was your role in the event? You were not actually on the side. Right? I'm, yes. more, I'm, the, I'm more the MC of the night. So right, I'll, 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 I'll be the MC of the night. I have my executive chef, Chef Martil, who will be uh, one of the assistants uh, assisting one of the teams. And then I have uh, Mark Nebrowski, who is uh, the chef for our et cetera, et cetera station, that will be uh, one of the uh, assistants also. Okay, MC Sunday Day, unique title. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so overall, how do you think, what, what do you think is your overall opinion about it, about the event? Do you see this happening in the future again? Yeah. I see this happening again in the future. Um, that, Chef slash uh, uh, battle of the chefs. It's a very exciting thing, and a lot of people enjoy watching it on television. Uh, and I think we're going to have just a good time uh, here at Illinois Wesleyan uh, putting this event on as they do on television. Uh, it, it's going to be exciting. I I I employ all those to come out and check us out on February the 26th. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and for telling us all about this really cool new event. And I am turning it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Well, it looks like it's time for sports. Let's start off with men's basketball. The Titans defeated Elmhurst College this past Saturday, 96-66. That puts them at number two in the CCIW Conference, and they'll play Elmhurst again this upcoming Friday in the CCIW semifinal in Rock Island. Good luck, Titans. The women's lacrosse team won their first game of the season 11-3 against Cornell College last Saturday. They play Benedictine University this upcoming Saturday at 1 p.m. in Lyle. And finally, men's track and field took 7th out of 12, while the women's took 3rd out of 10 this past Saturday at the Olivet Nazarene Invitational. Both the teams will compete in the CCIW Conference this Saturday starting at noon up in Kenosha. Well, good luck to all Titans this upcoming week as the CCIW conferences start. We wish you all the best. Go get them. And one final reminder for all of you Titans that the Battle of the Chefs over at Saga will be happening Thursday at 5.15. So uh, if you haven't already gotten involved, get your butt on up there because it sounds like it's going to be a fun time and very delicious. That is unfortunately all the time we have for this week's edition of Titan TV News, though. So I am Gina Blasky. And I'm Steve Santucci. Go, Go get him, Titans! Titans. <laughs>